Welcome, everyone, to Life Beyond Six Feet. I'm Damian from RKB Paranormal, my co-host, Josh. What's up? This week, we're doing something a little different. We're broadcasting live from the Old Stone Jail in Franklin, Kentucky. And we got Whiskey, Tango, Foxtrot, Paranormal Research with us. Guys and gals, welcome to Life Beyond Six Feet. Thank you. <laughs> so normally, like we just normally do, we just kind of dive right into this thing. So I'm just going to kind of go down the line. We've got Billy, Terry, Stacy, AJ, and Elizabeth. Billy, we're going to start with you, man. How did you kind of get down this paranormal path? Mm, uh, kind of like everybody else. Um, had uh, questions that need to be answered, and the only way to do it is to get out there and get after it. So that's what I've been doing ever since. Hell yeah. So did you kind of have any kind of personal experiences growing up that kind of got you interested? Uh, I did have a few experiences as I was growing up, and then... And again, like everybody else, everybody's story is about the same, you know, is, is the things that you come across, you know, you always wondered if it was real or not, more or right. less. Um, I remember as a young child that um, we was living in a farmhouse outside of town here. And um, my mom came and got me out of the bed. And as we was running through the kitchen to run out the back door, the um, the floor was uh, had. Uh, huge uh, humps in it all the kitchen cabinets was open dishes and and silverware was flying everywhere oh, as was running the door. Oh, yeah yeah and that, a, that, house, that house stands wow so you, you kind of got you started like like you said most everybody kind of as a child and just kind of kept the answers as you've gotten into an adult so so terry what about you you're you're billy's wife did you kind of get drug into this by him or are you kind of always in it as as well yeah, I kind of just follow him everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so no kind of personal experiences that kind of got you interested in as a kid? Not as a child, no. No. All right. Well, you know, not everybody's the same. So right. All right, we'll go with Stacy. What about you? What kind of got you down this path? Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, I have been into the paranormal as long as I can remember. Um, I don't even remember being a child and not knowing Right. That there was out there. Um, I've had numerous experiences. Um, I was lucky enough to have a granny who always told me ghost stories that happened to her when she was a child and growing up out in the country. And I've literally just been interested in it forever and have had many experiences. And I finally found a team to join. So here I am. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, AJ, what about you, man? What kind of got you into this whole thing? And if anybody well, does hear people talking in the background, the rest of our team's upstairs kind of doing a, a pre-investigation. So if you hear any voices behind us, that's probably what you're hearing. So, all right. Sorry, AJ, go ahead, man. Oh, yeah. No, uh, you, probably when the time when I was young, uh, I would go out in the woods a lot and I would hear voices, felt things, like very closely felt things. Uh, I learned how to ground myself at an early age, like close to trees or nature. like nature. Yeah. And, uh, it just kind of went from there. I've always had like feelings like all the time, but I didn't understand it. And it kind of grew and uh, found a team. You know, I, I wasn't looking. It just kind of found me. And right. I, I'm, it's honored to be a part of it. It's a great journey. Right. You're, you're definitely part of a good team. So and uh, who am I leaving out? Elizabeth. Elizabeth what about Elizabeth. you? What kind of got you into this? My journey was a lot like Stacy's. I, I had uh, older relatives who had experiences of their own and they wanted to share those stories with me. And I also had some experiences as a child. Uh, I vividly remember an experience that involved my grandmother. My grandmother had passed away when I was five. Oh. About when I was seven or eight, I felt her and I saw her and I heard her. And oh, wow. uh, and and so that was that was my first experience, my real first vivid experience. And I have had experiences, I feel like as a highly sensitive person uh, since then. And uh, I'm, I'm grateful to be able to learn the stories of the people that we experience uh, on this team. So I'm, I'm very grateful to be a part of this team. All right. Absolutely. So how did Whiskey, Tango, Foxtrot, WTF, Paranormal, how did they how did this team kind of come about? Mm, well, I guess I started it myself, and um, it's grew into this. Um, I always, I always wanted a team, 
and I've had a lot of team members in the past, um, but th- th- I feel like this team here is uh, is solid, and uh, we can trust each other and trust each other's judgment. Right. Um, but uh, Whiskey Tango came about as um, – it used to be one of those sayings as when you're on an investigation – to where you're like, what the fuck, what the fuck was that? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, it's just uh, came about to uh, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. There you go. And, and it works, too. And then because you probably yeah, couldn't cool. make a team and call them what the fuck paranormal. So right, you know, right. Whiskey, Tango, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot actually works pretty good. So mm-hmm. so let's talk about kind of Billy, kind of like your first investigation once you actually got your original team formed. Like, where did you go? Like, what happened? How, how did that very first initial investigation go? Good Hell's God. Bar Dam. Yeah, that would be Hell's Bar Dam, I guess. Um, we um, we was frequent flyers down at Hell's Bar Dam. Place um, go. It's a bucket list. Place. Oh, yeah. I, man, it's it's turned into like a haunted attraction from what I understand. You know, it's uh, it's a little different than it was when when we first started going down there, which, you know, it was pretty rough. I mean, it was you had to watch where you're stepping. You had to watch, you know, uh, your surroundings. Um, Cause that place, it's got a lot of history and man, I tell you, it, um, it never did disappoint us, but uh, you know, it, it has um, a lot of shadow figures, a lot of voices, a lot of footsteps, stuff moving. Um, we had, um, we had one instance where we was playing with um I know this kind of sounds weird, but it was playing with Hot Wheels upstairs, uh, right. playing uh, another uh, spirit. And we left everything up there. But on our way back down, the car was in our pathway as we was leaving. Um, oh, wow. So it was it went from upstairs to downstairs before we even got to downstairs. Huh. Definitely yeah. a what the fuck moment. <laughs> right. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and he said you were a frequent flyer down there. That that's somewhere we've been wanting to go. And and you know now it's a, a distillery, and I know they do a haunted attraction during Halloween. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think the last I heard, they they were talking about opening it back up to public investigations and private investigations. So hopefully that's something something that uh, all these teams that hadn't got to go would get to do very soon. So Terry, was that kind of your first investigation too? Yes, it was. All right. Stacy, what about you? What was kind of your first investigation? First investigation, this uh, where you're sitting right now, and um, and then we've done Octagon. But on my own, I would just sort of investigate cemeteries and things like that before I had a, you know, team to be on. And um, I'm sorry, Stacy. Josh, is yeah, everybody okay over happened. there? Yeah, I, I think Terry upstairs is uh, messing with some of the girls a little bit. So uh, oh, somebody yeah. got grabbed. Yeah. Okay, yeah, they were having their own what the fuck moment just then. <laughs> <laughs> it happens up there, man. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Stacy. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm now, you was talking about uh, you done some investigation, in some different cemeteries and stuff like that. Yeah, just on my own over the years and. The only equipment I had was really just myself and a digital recorder, you know, and I would find an app to put on my phone and go around. And um, I really had no idea there were actually groups and teams that did this aside from what I saw on TV. Right. And one day, close to a year ago, um, I came up here to bring a friend. Actually, it was AJ's daughter. Brought her up here to turn the museum and show her the jail. And walking on the way up here, I told her, I said, I really do wish I could find an actual paranormal team to be a part of. We walk in and it was another gentleman that volunteers had here at the museum was giving us the tour. And we go over to the jail and I start asking all these questions about how haunted is this place? What's happened over here? And he says, well, I got somebody you need to meet. So he brings us across the street. I meet Billy and he's like, okay, I'll give you the real tour now, like a paranormal <laughs> tour, you know? So he gives me that and we all hit it off, and I became a part of this team. Hell yeah. All right, so AJ, man, what about you? What was kind of like your first initial investigation? Not with just this team, but just kind of on your own. I got one. It was early on, like, well, not that long ago. Uh, I was investigating uh, Stones River, Murfreesboro, on my uh-huh. own. 
And, you know, it, everyone thought I was crazy or whatever. I'm walking out there. I'd get EVPs, and I actually got one. It, it was like so what uh, what I would say was, would be a Confederate soldier or a Union soldier it, saying it's so cold, which makes sense because the battle happened in winter. Right. And everything was frozen. So it kind of got me. I love history anyway, which – and uh, I kind of always kind of had that. And then – uh, Stacy kind of brought me along and uh, I think it was here where you're at right yeah, now. At the jail, yeah. yeah. Right. And so I was like, it kind of all, all the pieces come together. I'm like, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. this, this is so cool. Right. And that's always a good, a, a good place to do an investigation as a battlefield. That's something we haven't done yet, but uh, it, it's definitely on the bucket list, like shallow battlefield and, and stuff like that. So, yeah. So Elizabeth, what about you? What was kind of like your first initial investigation? I would say that I was pretty late to the scene as far as investigation goes, as far as using equipment. Um, I really hadn't had any experience at all as far as investigating until I encountered this group. And uh, that was probably about two years ago, mm -hmm. year and a half ago, uh, that I came in. And um, I worked here at the Historical Society with Billy, and um, we just started using some equipment here. And uh, that's when I really got my feet wet with it. And um, as far as uh, my first, I guess, investigation that I got to go to was at Elm Springs. Oh, Elm, Springs. Elm, Elm Springs. So um, I was kind of late to the scene. I didn't have any experience at all until I started working here back in 2020. All right. Now, speaking, you know, we are coming live from the Old Stone Jail. So, so how, Billy, did you kind of initially get involved at the jail and, and the historical society and all that, how, how did you get to where you're at now? Um, well, it took a lot of convincing with the board members to let us even use this place. Um, but they seen that it can benefit them financially. Um, and we've been doing it here for about what, three years. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we're continuing strong. Um, you know, we did um, about 6,700 last year. Um, to help fund a lot of the right. stuff here at the History Center. Um, and that's just with the paranormal teams coming in, renting time, and um, and also doing a few events every so often. Our right. meeting is a big hit here um, when teams can come together and all in one spot and uh, do some fundraising and help benefit this place again. You know, we, we, we take care of this place. This is a good spot for people. Absolutely. And so how, how did you initially found, find out that the jail was haunted? Um, just by working here, really, um, it's, it's either voices, footsteps, or things um, moving along the floors, um, and just um, the actual energy in the rooms. You know, it, it really kind of sets you on end sometimes. So, um, right. you know, I'm, I'm a little sensitive to that, so... Um, yeah, when I'm, I'm here on Mondays by myself working, I got to put my earphones in because if not, they'll be asking me to go every which way around this place. So, uh, right now for those who don't really know much about the old stone jail, kind of give a little bit of background. You don't have to go into like the full blown history, but just kind of a little quick history lesson. So kind of people that don't know, kind of know a little bit about this place. Well, the Old Stone Jail um, is actually not the oldest jail here in Franklin. Uh, that was built in 1879. It's made entirely of limestone. Um, but there's an, also a jail that a lot of people don't know about in the history. And it's just right beside you in that brick uh, jailer's residence building. Mm -hmm. And come to find out, it was built in 1830. The upstairs was a jail cell. And it was the jail cell from 1830 to 1879 until the stone jail was open over there. Wow, yeah, I, I don't. I, you you may have told us that when we was here last time, but that was a couple of years ago, and I forgot. I forgot about that. So, so what's kind of some of the activity other than just kind of you know footsteps and voices that you guys have experienced while investigating over here? Well, as you guys seen a while ago, um, you got your friendly spirit up, upstairs in the stone jail. Um, he does uh, have contact with women up there. He gets a little frisky up there. Um, he um, he also grabs, you know, touches males also. Um, and then um, in a few other the cells, the energy is pretty crazy. 
um, a lot of EVPs, a lot of footsteps, shadow figures. Um, over in the um, Civil War room, what we call it, um, energy is just too crazy over there. A lot of people can't stay in that room because the energy is so high. Um, and it, it does a lot of um, spirit box, uh, spirit apps, anything of that nature. It's really great over there. Um, any type of K2 meters, um, mail meters, um, rim pods, you know, everything gets hit over there. All right. Now, now, what's 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 Terry's story like? What what what? Why is he such a frisky, active spirit? Well, when we first started doing this, uh, we did a couple sessions upstairs, and uh, the women always got touched. And you know, it was just uh, kind of like, um, you know, he he ha ha that happened. That's evidence. We right. just continue on. But the more we investigated, the more physical he got. Um, so the ladies started getting worried and I started getting worried about it. Um, so I did some research and I found out that, um, after a few sessions up there through EVP and spirit box, um, that his, his first and last name. So I did some research on that and come to find out that he was there on rape charges. Um, and he, um, more or less told us the victim's names in several sessions and oh. how many people that he did that to so on and so forth. So we, we actually shut it off upstairs uh, for paranormal teams to go up for several months, almost a year. And um, then the more we talked more teams and how their um, um, thought was on the process of what we, how we should handle this. Um, Cause it was getting to the point where we felt really unsafe about it. Right. And, um, so everybody told us, you know, this is this is what we do. You know, this is what we're here um, to try to get the evidence, to try to figure out um, and and see who these people are. And so it's evidence. So we left it at that. We opened the place back up for everybody to go up there and and have experiences. But we always warn people, you know, you, you don't go up there alone. You know, if if, if women wants to go up there. This is what's going to happen to you. I can tell you uh, verbatim that this is what's going to happen. And nine times out of 10, it will happen to you up there. Right. So <clears throat> what about the historical society across the road there? How how active is that place? Um, it's not as active as the jail, of course. Um, right. the, jail is, the jail is his own entity over there. Um, over here, we got a lot of footsteps, a lot of voices. Um, you can hear conversations during the day over here. Um, you, know, you hear it back there behind you now? Yeah, I'm hearing some, some noises in behind us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Spirit, uh, shadow figures over here. Um, any, any type of uh, spiritus I have. Um, not spiritus, but we use necrophonics quite a bit. Um, I keep hearing something over there. <laughs> it's like a <laughs> tapping or something. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. You'll get taps and knocks over there. It feels like there's a more attachment to objects over here, where right. over there it's more attachment to location. Yeah. Well, I think it was the heat turning yeah, on. I sort of say that was the heat this then. So it might have yeah. been the heat. Anyway, so um, <clears throat> kind of to each one of you guys, what has been, you know, your biggest scare at, at any location, whether it be here at the jail or just wherever? What's been like the probably your biggest what the fuck moment during your investigations? Whoever wants to go first. I'll go. Go <laughs> Well, I was at Octagon Hall and uh, outside. And then, you know, we, we were there having a novice hunt. And I was kind of off on my own a little bit outside. Walking down towards the tree line. I was going to head towards the slave cemetery, if anybody mm -hmm. knows the layout. And uh, I seen something behind a tree. A shadow figure and it moved to the side but it wasn't completely blacked out it was like a like a, a tannish like there was some kind of but it was dark and it, it was it it was low it's like uh not the height of a man but it was kind of crouched but in a crouch position right and i seen it i was like i didn't just see that uh, <laughs> i uh you know and i was like what the fuck was that? So I, I start, I get a little bit down there, closer, closer, and 
ever since then, like e when I saw that we, later on in the night, fast forward, there was people were seeing movements in the field behind the tree line, like shadow figures, movements. Ever since that, the whole group, everybody had came out of the house, not all at the same time, but everybody was being drawn down there. Huh. And we all, eventually, we kind of uh, focused in towards the slave cemetery and I could not stop looking out in the field. And, and uh, that night I saw a lot of, it was a very extremely active, saw some things out there, uh, possible UFO in the sky. There was weird, all kinds of stuff you couldn't explain for sure. Right. And we had a great night, but it kind of gravitated. But at first I was like, I had to actually sit there and think, I'm not scared. I was fucking scared. <laughs> <laughs> And that 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 octagon hall that's 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 a whole other story on itself. And uh, yeah. you know, you know, we've been there once, and that was well, probably our second actual investigation. Yeah. And it was on a novice hunt, but they kind of just let us do our own thing. And and shit, we experienced stuff like everywhere. Uh, yeah, the whole night, every location we went, every room, inside, outside, it was it was very active. You know, hearing growls coming from a nursery closet. Um, <laughs> We, up in the attic. We went up in the attic, me and Josh did, and we heard what sounded like heavy breathing in one of the corners and sounded like a wooden chair being drug across the floor. And it was just that that whole place is just just hopping with activity. Yeah. And and you know, you said UFOs, there's reported of UFOs and, and reports of Bigfoot, and you know, not to mention the mountain lines that they say roam the property. So it was uh when they told us to uh you know the only place to go to have a handgun when you go out on the property. So yeah. It's a, it's a place is pretty wild. So Stacy, what about you? What's kind of been like your biggest what the fuck moment during an investigation? Oh, wow. During an actual investigation. Oh, now we did have something strange happen upstairs. Oh, you know, next to where you are at the residence, the jailer's uh -huh. residence. Um, <laughs> We had a lady named Vicky with us that night, mm -hmm. and we were up in the old Civil War room. We had a drip wire set up, rim pods, everything like that. And Terry and I, we're sitting in some fold-up chairs up against the wall, and I've got the doorway going out to the landing and the stairs to my left. And Terry and I keep feeling like we're hearing talking and like somebody like coming up and down those stairs, but everything's locked up. We're the only ones in there. And, you know, we kind of keep looking out there and we're like, did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. What was that? Um, this goes on for, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes. It was a, it was a while. Huh. And, um, and then we were hearing it. It was getting ramping up. We were hearing more and more to where then everyone in the room was like, it sounds like somebody's running up the stairs. And the lady that was with us, she's like, well, if you're out there, come on in here. And not 20 seconds later, there's a display in the middle of the room. It's a heavy, heavy wooden display. Mm -hmm. It sounded like somebody came running into the room and slammed into that thing. It shook. Oh, wow. Uh, violently <laughs> shook, right? Yeah. And we're all like, oh, holy crap, what the fuck is that? You know, <laughs> like, what's going on? And I'm like, did you touch it? You know, we're trying to figure out like, how did that just happen? And Vicki, she didn't get the whole thing recorded. She actually had a camera set up on the floor and you kind of see the corner of the dis display. So you do kind of see the vibration of that. But one thing that is really strange, I don't know if you saw the video or not, but a couple of minutes before that happens, you see Terry and I sitting there in the chairs and you see a black shadow cross over us and on the wall behind and at the same time, her and I both look at each other and look out into the landing. And then that's when the display was hit. So that that's was pretty crazy. Wild. Yeah, that's pretty that's pretty wild. Hopefully, like something like that happened to us tonight. So <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> All right. So Elizabeth, what about you? I tend to be pretty neutral uh, as far as my emotions go uh, when I'm on an investigation. <coughs> but, um, I like to try to take it all in, but I have had an experience and it's happened to me twice in the same location, same spot at Octagon Hall. Uh, we did a novice hunt back in 2021 where there was an actual image taken of something, uh, some sort of 
energy directly behind me and you can make out that it looks like a human. It has a very human figure to it. Uh, it is in a spot where there's some mention that it might be a portal. Uh, right. It's in the tack room, room and I'm back in the corner and it, it does look like somebody standing directly behind me. Just wow. this last year, we were at Octagon Hall again doing another novice hunt, uh, leading another novice hunt. And uh, we had two different apps running, uh, Ghost Tube and also um, Necrophonics. And it was relaying the same information across both um, apps. Yeah. And um, the voices that were coming across or the voice that came across said, I'm going to take you with me. I I'm yeah. going to take yeah. you with me. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I had to get out. That yeah. was that was enough. <laughs> that's, that's a little much. <laughs> Again, at, at Octagon Hall, that's <laughs> place. all right. So, so Terry, what about you? What's been your biggest moment? Um, I would say my biggest moment. Of course, I'm involved in all theirs. Apparently, <laughs> um, Billy and I. And another gentleman that was with us, we were at the old school down here in town and we were down in the basement and Billy was doing a Facebook live and the, the gentleman was walking around behind me and came up over on the other side and Billy was asking questions about what, it, what everyone's names was. And he said, you know, y'all know my name is Billy and it came through the speaker box, Billy. And they were like, you know this guy? And they said his name was Jay. And then they were like, he was like, what is her name? And you don't hear nothing. And then he asked again, what is her name? And right between me and Jay, we hear a woman scream in our ears. And it, we, it freaked me out. I physically, I don't normally react to anything. And it, it made me react. And then when we went home, um, I was watching the Facebook live and you hear a woman say my name and it just, it just that was my, what the fuck I called Billy cause he wasn't home yet. And I was like, you need to get here <laughs> <laughs> and you need to watch this. Oh, so yeah, that, that was mine. That's crazy. All right, Billy, we're saving you for last man. What's been your biggest, what the fuck moment? Ah, uh, dude, I, I've got too many really. <laughs> um, one that stands out probably the most. I guess when I got my attachment, man, uh, that really stood out to me. And it's always stood out because it's never happened again. Thank God. Right. Uh, was that um, Wilden Manor okay. over in uh, Central City. I was with another team at that time. Um, and we was uh, upstairs. Uh, we had a medium and a historian on remote with our phones. And the medium was talking to us about who was in that room that we was chasing. Um, Cause our K2 meters was going crazy. Um, it was probably about six of us in the room. And the, um, the guys that was with uh, the medium told them that there was a lady that was trapped there and the lady wanted help. And one of the guys that was with me was was Wes Neal, uh, good friend, uh, great guy. He was um, he said that he would help her. And as we was uh, as we was walking out with her, because it was like the few pictures that we had taken at the time, uh, a few of us went out into the hallway and the picture that was taken uh, showed that there was like a object behind Wes hmm. and Wes like that where it was it was his body was really heavy. And by the time he got out of there um, and got to the outside, he felt like that it was all lifted. It was all gone. But he was, he was they literally had to drag him through uh, Wilton Manor to get him outside because it was so heavy on him. Wow. Uh, but once he got outside, he was fine. And then uh, after we continued for a little bit longer with the investigation, Wes rode with me back home and um, – Dude, when we got going down a road, it was um, very emotional. Uh, and me and him both, I, we couldn't figure out why we was crying like two big babies going down the highway. Wow. Um, he, um, it took me 
days to uh, for it to leave me. Um, but he got it worse, and uh, and it took him almost a month to get over it. Wow. Hmm. But I, I'd say that was uh, one of the most what the fuck moments I've ever right. had. Yeah. I can imagine that having something come home with you. That's that's always that that big risk that you take doing this thing, and, and you just never know what could come home with you. So right. That, yeah, that's pretty wild. Yep. So, question I've got is, is is later on whenever we're over here doing our investigation tonight, where's the one place that I should be by myself where I need to go sit, be alone, nobody else with me? <laughs> Because I, I always have a spot. Usually somebody will give me a spot where, you know, they want me to go sit by myself. So if y'all were sending me out to sit in a spot in this jail alone, where would it be? Um, well, too bad you didn't bring any soap on a rope because you can go upstairs <laughs> and uh, in the Well, I do stone. have my... I do have my cuffs and shackles with me. I brought from work, so I will be cuffed and shackled wherever it is I go. It's a party now, ain't it? All right. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, um, definitely upstairs, Old Stone Jail. Uh, probably the cell to your right in the center. All right. And that's where I'll be. That's where you're going. That's it. <laughs> so... So what's kind of some places, other places you guys have been besides like where you've mentioned and obviously other than here, like what's some of like your, your, your most well-known investigations? Um, you know, we was big on um, Brushy Mountain. Oh yeah. Uh, fixing the head back there. Um, let's see, like I said, Hell's Bar Dam was a big thing for us for a long time. Uh, we ain't been there in a couple of years. Um don't like Wilden Manor. We we don't want to go back there. Um, we I, love the Octagon Hall. We love the Octagon Hall. We do. Um, but we got we got us some new places here in town that we're working on. So we're we're gonna take heed and try to work on some of those buildings too. Yeah, hopefully you can get that going from what you was telling us earlier, and uh, that, that'll be pretty exciting if we get all that put together. So yes. So, so ultimately, what what is the goal behind Whiskey Tango Foxtrot Paranormal Research? Like, what's your ultimate goal for the goal for this? Mm, uh, for it to continue when I'm gone. Um, you know, we're um, I'm kind of on the fence about retiring a little bit, so I'm thinking about handing it over to somebody else. All right, let them continue. Yeah, I'm sure when, when that time comes, you'll find find the right person to, to kind of pass the torch to. So do you guys ever do any kind of like personal residences or anything? You just kind of keep it commercial. Absolutely. We're actually working on one right now, eight, eight miles out of town here. Um, it's starting to um, got our curiosity peaked. And uh, I think we're going to hit it about another week from now. Oh, awesome. Yeah, th this whole little town of Franklin, it just, it just seems like it's kind of a hot spot for activity. It oh, almost yeah. seems like anywhere you look, it's like, man, that, that place could be hopping but with something if we could get in there. So so has that always kind of been like the sense, you know, living and kind of growing up here that this place is kind of like a hotbed for activity? Well, um, the, the way I like to describe our town when it comes to paranormal, it's, um, you know, we have this generation and a, and a generation gap to where um, 20, 20 years ago, let's say, mm -hmm. um, not, there wasn't a single young person that owned a business here around our square. Right. But now um, in this generation, there's more younger um, business people that's taken over these stores here in our, on our town to right. where 20 years ago, you know, the paranormal was like taboo to talk about. You know, they didn't they didn't want to say, well, you know, there's something over here in the corner that we've seen. You know, it's moved my right. coffee pot. I don't have no answers for it. But right. we don't talk about it to where today paranormal is in. You know, we, mm -hmm. you know, if somebody has a trouble, you know, having problems, they're they're quick to say, "Hey, you know, we thought that was a ghost, so let's call somebody." Right. Yeah. You know, so it's it's the, the, the generations have changed. You know, and people are more uh, open minded to um, ask for help now. Oh Absolutely. yeah, 
And, um, and I guess you can kind of thank a lot of the ghost shows for that stuff too, even though a lot of that seems over dramatic, over dramatic, and, and, yeah, and and some of it's probably a lot of it's probably fake, but. You kind of got those shows to kind of thank for that because if it wasn't for those shows, a lot of us may not even really be doing this right now. Yeah, and, there, uh, there's there's not very many shows that I have um, stock in, so to speak. Uh, right. I've seen, I've seen a few shows. I've been in a few shows, and um, I mean, there it's just it's really scary, man. Um, how the paranormal field has gotten when it comes right. to TV shows and stuff. I think right. some of that, but double-edged sword yes. because it, it gives an outlet for people that are interested in it, but mm -hmm. don't have any friends or family that are mm -hmm. believe anything or may make fun of them for yeah. including ghosts or this yeah. and that. So they're able, you know, to watch some of these shows and be like, oh, okay, you know, I can relate to this. I've had experiences too. And, you know, maybe they can learn a little bit about, you know, maybe possibly getting their own EVP or, yeah, right. you know, playing a rim pod, you know, or something like it's that. Like but at the same time, yeah. some of that is so over yeah. dramatized. Yeah. Like uh, and you don't know what's real and what's right. not with what they're doing. I, so the way I've called it now here lately is uh it's been Hollywood. Yeah. So it, it, it does it does it makes for good entertainment, that's for sure. And but when you can you can clearly tell that they're they're bullshitting and it's like, man, that's just not that's not real. You can tell that's not real. But you know, there is a couple that that make me question. I was like, okay, was that legit, or they just kind of, you know? But speaking of television shows, has any paranormal shows ever been filmed here at the jail? Oh yeah, yeah. There's been a couple. Oh yeah, which ones? Um, well, Haunted, Haunted Discoveries. Discoveries. Yeah, those are yeah, uh, I've, I've heard of that one. Those are the guys that you need to look out for when when uh, they started airing here soon. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to watch out for them guys. They're they're great, man. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, good good group of people. All right. So if, if anybody wants to kind of follow along with you guys on, on your investigations and, and your Facebook lives and all that stuff, where can guys find you at? Uh they can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we're not really big on. Um, I guess social media, you know. We do have a TikTok. We, yeah, we I haven't added anything in a while. We we so. do have a TikTok. Thank like to Stacy and her son Sebastian. Um, you know, we we're we're just not much on the social media, man. You know, we're we don't like putting our stuff out because you know we we like we we do this for a totally different reason. We we just right. enjoy uh, what we do and how to how much we can help people and uh, and we also like teaching people. You know. Right. It, I'm not saying we're the best at it and we do the right thing, but you know, I'm just, I, I like to help people out, you know, if they got any questions or, or want to know how to do this, um, what's the best way to go about it, so on and so forth. Right. The history is important to us as well. Right? Yeah. And uh, we really want to make sure that the, the research aligns with what we're, what the data that's coming across. Yeah, exactly. Right. Now, now if y'all caught something like just absolutely mind blowing and, and, there's no way to debunk it. Would you put that out for people to see? Um, I think that depends. Yeah, that depends, yeah. really. Um, cause I think, first off, it would depend on who was involved. Like, say, if it was a video clip. And if it's right. someone we really know very well, we may not put that right. out. You know, yeah. Just say, like, it was just you guys over here at the jail one night or something. Just you guys. And you just seen something that was just like, holy shit, people's got to people's got to see this. You know, would you would you want to be willing to put it out there? I, sometimes we go live every once in a while, especially when we're trying a new experiment or something. Uh, we like to do that uh, just to show people what we're doing. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we kind of like sharing a little bit, but you know, we're just not out there. Like we, I don't know if we should or shouldn't really, but I think there's an air of mystery to us. We like to keep it that way. Yeah. We like to keep <laughs> the mystery. To us, yeah. All right. Well guys, I, I really enjoyed this interview. It was fun getting to chat with you guys and, uh, I guess here in a few minutes we're gonna kind of kind of tag team some stuff with you guys, kind of maybe swap up a little bit and kind of learn from each other because there might be some stuff that you guys can teach us and maybe we can teach you guys a thing or two here in a few minutes. So, so everybody watching and listening, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, thank you guys for joining us live from the Old Stone Jail in Franklin, Kentucky. Josh, thank you for joining me this week. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Well, everybody, y'all have fun and we will chat with everybody soon. All right. Bye. All right. Thank you. Thanks.